Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Amen, and thank you for your prayers. Thank you for praying today and worshiping God today. We're going to be in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1, to begin our, our message. And I want to just share, as you're turning to that, <clears throat> that as we are worshiping and, and singing that we want the Holy Spirit to come, I just sense I need to say something to you. And, uh, and that is that the Holy Spirit lives in you as believers. As you're a believer already, the Holy Spirit already dwells in you, and, there, and we want more of the Holy Spirit, amen? But do not forget to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, too. Do not wait for you to feel some kind of, the, of, of feeling or emotion that the Holy Spirit came upon you or anything like that. You have the Holy Spirit in you as believers. Walk with the spirit of joy. Walk with the spirit of power. Walk with the spirit of peace. Walk in the Spirit, and we will experience more of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to want more of the Holy Spirit. And He is pouring out His Spirit upon us. We must be wanting it and receiving it. Amen? And so I just want to encourage you with that. As I was singing that, I was like, Lord, I thank you that we already have your Spirit, and we want more of your Holy Spirit to help us. Also, just so you know, we're going to be doing a training call together beginning on not this Wednesday because of Empower Week, but the following week. Our world has obviously been through a lot where we've been in our separate places and isolating and distancing from each other. And that uh, has come with some repercussions and consequences. And we've done that for, for reasons, you know, obviously because of the pandemic and whatnot. We also have a lot of new people in our church. And so we need to learn how to connect together again. We need to learn how to be in relationship and be the body of Christ together again. And so I'm going to be doing uh, about eight to 10 weeks on this topic. I invite every single one of you to come on out and we'll be in the, here in this sanctuary and we'll begin at seven o'clock and be here till 815. There is a lot of places in scripture that talk about being together, being there for one another. Right now, we need to be there for each other. Amen. And there's ways to do it, even with um, being careful to protect yourself and everything. There's ways to be there for people. So we want to make sure we don't negate that. We also are doing this to prepare for when things break and things open up in the name of Jesus, praise the Lord, and that this virus goes away or becomes a common cold or, or even, even less than that, we're praying for it to be gone. And we want to be ready because we have had, we had 25 guests last week. 25 guests in the middle of what we're going through. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That is big for us because we're in the middle of a pandemic still. And it was the first of the year and we had 25 guests come in here. And you know the numbers are really high right now in Delaware, and yet that many people came in. So we need to be ready to help people get connected to the body of Christ. And so I'm really, I'm really passionate about that topic, and, uh, and, and the way forward, uh, that is an important topic to discuss. So we're in Joshua 1. I, I trust I gave you plenty of time to get there. But guess what? We're going to be on the screen too. So, oh, man. But I like, a good old, I like a good old copy of the Bible in front of me personally. The context here is that the Israelites are headed to the promised land, and unfortunately, Moses passes away. He dies, and it's time now for Joshua to take the helm and lead the Israelites into the promised land. It's really interesting that in this season or this chapter of the Israelites' story with God, it would be the time where they have to fight because Joshua was the warrior leader of the army of Israelites. So it's just fitting that the warrior, the leader, is the next one in command, the next one in charge. He's been promoted to lead the Israelites into the promised land. And now this time it's going to take a lot of war and fighting and enemies to get to the promised land and to take it. This is the land that God is giving them. And I thought about that going into 2022. And this this story that we're going to read, and we're just going to be in this first chapter, that's it, and we're not doing a series in Joshua, but this story is amazing because of what we're going through today, we need to hear the same words that God gave Joshua. And so that's why I wanted to bring this to us today. Joshua chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 1 says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, he said, Moses, 
My servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to, stop, to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you everywhere you go. Amen. <clears throat> when I first started leading the church here as the lead pastor in 2019, it was five months or so before the pandemic hit. And I remember um, I was already kind of fearful about taking on such a, a prestigious and very important and, and scary role to be a lead pastor. My father had been doing it for 40 years. Um, he retired. He didn't die. Praise the Lord. This isn't like a you know, Moses Joshua story. Okay, he retired. But I remember getting many cards and text messages and comments of Joshua 1-9 for the new season of my life as a leader. This goes for all of us though, isn't it? Are you a new parent? Are we in another year once again that is, seems to be challenging? Yes. Whatever the context may be for your life as a leader in your home or leading people to the Lord, 2022 is here and we need God. And we need to be strong and we need to be courageous. Now the reason why he could be strong and courageous is because the beginning of this was three promises. And the first promise was that you're going to get the land that I have given you. And notice that, that God says, I have given it to you. This was a stewardship thing. God had already planned to give this land. Now it was Joshua's responsibility to take it and then to take care of it when they get there. By the way, just so you know, the blessings you have are from God. God did it. It's God's works, not our works, that also receive eternal life. Amen? Amen. Now we talk in the New Testament, the gospel, we don't receive eternal life through our works, we receive eternal life through the works of Christ. You will receive eternal life through faith in Christ, not faith in your good deeds. So it would be through God and his provision that he would give this land to Joshua. Now it was Joshua's responsibility to lead the people to take it. Now Joshua would be victorious. This is the second promise. No one would be able to stop Joshua and the army. And lastly, the best, the best promise of all, God will be with them. He would not abandon them. He would not fail them. Now, just connect that to everyday life today. Praise the Lord for that. The same promises we have today. Now, here's the thing. A promise is like a covenant with God. We have to keep our side of the covenant, the promise. And our responsibility, God gives to Joshua as well. And the first uh, contingency or the first condition is to be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. He would face armies that were massive. He would face uh, the fact that he would have to cross the Jordan River to get there. He was going to face and go through impossibly, seemingly impossible tasks. And he was gonna need to have strength and courage to lead through this. And it would start that if he was strong and if he was courageous, everyone around him would be Two. Now, the word strong and courageous in the Hebrew mean exactly that. It just means strength. It means uh, bravery. It means resoluteness. It just, it means to be strong in the Lord. And you will find your strength in the Lord. When I read this this past week, 
and I knew right away this is what God wanted us to hear moving into this year. The thing, I, the word that came to my mind after God tells Joshua this, there was one word that came to my mind that, that Joshua is going to need to have. It's trust. Trust in God. We need to trust in God today. We don't understand how he's working. We don't get what he's doing right now. We, we would, if, we, if we were to understand what God is up to, our, our brains would pop. He didn't ask us to, to have it all figured out. He asked you to trust him. In Joshua, he never says trust him in this moment, but it's implied that Joshua is going to have to trust God. That why, that's why he would be strong and courageous. That's why he would follow the word, trust the word of God and not deviate from it. We must trust God. It's one thing to say that you trust God. It's another to step forward in faith and do exactly what God says. What was next was Joshua was going to have to now get the army together, pack up their stuff and the people, and now move forward into their destiny. Now, here's what I have discovered in my personal life. That those who step out in faith find out how trustworthy God is. Those who do not step out in faith never see how trustworthy God is. Those who step out in faith and trust God discover the blessings in the trustworthiness of God. And then because you experience how trustworthy God is, you're willing to step out again and again and again. You experience a blessed life. You experience a prosperous life because you step out in faith in that scary moment and take God at his word and believe it to be true. That's basic faith and trust right there, one-on-one, amen? That's what Joshua was gonna, that's what we have to have. We have to trust God through this year. Now, the second condition, the first one was be strong and courageous, and I'm saying that it takes trust in God to do that. The second one was, be careful to obey all the instructions given to Moses. He's talking about the law. He's talking about the commandments and and the rules for worship. He says, do not deviate from them. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate, reflect on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Meditation here isn't referring to some new age thought, okay, and, and going through all that and being one with the earth. Meditation here has to do with reflecting and thinking about the scripture, storing it in your heart, having it in here and here, and keeping it on your heart and mind to guide you through the day. To have the word so full in you that all you can think of is what would God want me to do according to his word right now in this moment. To meditate on it day and night meant to not, to never stop. You may take that literal and you go, you know what, I'm going to read the Bible today in the morning and at night, great, but God wants you to think about it even during the day too. Now you would think, oh, you would think that God would give him some war strategies in this chapter because that's what he has to do is conquer land and fight people. But God's strategy is not like the world's strategy. Our weapons are not of this world, as Ephesians teaches us. And we don't wage war the same way the world wages war. The way God wages war is the right way forward. By the way, the message is entitled The Way Forward. Did I say that yet? I forgot. I'm human. It happens. When it comes to God, obedience, holiness, and integrity were more important than the skill of the army. God would make a way and win the battles ahead of them when they walked in integrity. How many of us have made integrity the top of our resolutions list? And yet that is on the top of God's list for us is righteousness and holiness and integrity. When no one's looking and no one, God sees Do we live in integrity? And when everyone is looking, are we living with integrity? That's what matters to God. And with integrity, they would be successful and prosperous. And that integrity of life is found right here in the scriptures. If Joshua were to lead with integrity and his people with integrity, they would be successful. I heard it said one time, 
I think it's Ken Blanchard or Stephen Covey who said this, skills get you to the top, but character keeps you there. We've seen that in our world. We've seen that in our own lives, that when we deviate from the integrity and the character, we may be really good at what we do, but as soon as we mess up one time, that's enough to dismantle or disqualify us from leadership. It's enough to knock us out, and, and, and God is like, you know what? You need to sit down then for a season of, of integrity and repair and not lead, and someone else is going to have to do it instead. God is looking for integrity to win. Integrity would keep the favor of God, but wickedness would lift his hand of protection off of them. Success and favor is tied to knowing and obeying God's commands and word. Why? Because the scriptures give us clear direction and insight, practical guidance and wisdom that keep you and me and our kids and our families on the straight and narrow. It's practical advice. I don't need to see an angel today to know that if I follow God's word, that I'm going to be okay. If I live God's word, I'm going to be okay. I don't need some special revelation from God that if I follow his word, everything's going to be okay. Like, I don't need a vision. We have his word. His word created us. We came into existence because of his word. And his word is not just what he breathes, but it's Jesus Christ, according to John 1. I don't need to have some special Vision, angel, revelation, or prophet tell me that the best way forward this year is to read the Bible. God told me himself. Turn off the prophets, please. Come on now. I even, this is not even in my notes. Turn off all the other pastors, although I like the counsel of many. And first, turn on your relationship with God. Read the Bible, and then let the counsel of other pastors, including myself, give you confirmation of the way forward. Praise the Lord. In fact, in fact, when you know God's word, you'll know who is off. You'll be like, whoop, turning that one off. That guy's off. Story after story, we see in the Bible where those who were successful, the key ingredient was integrity with God. The way they kept being successful and moving forward in every year of their life was because they lived in integrity with God. Joseph, perfect example. David, he messed up, but he repented. He suffered the consequences of sin. He turned his life around. He was successful. Daniel made a habit of prayer and behind the scenes, faithful to God. Ezra, Nehemiah, the list goes on. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Integrity. Integrity. The way forward is to follow the word of God and not deviate from it. And the result would have been for, jo for, for Joshua. You ready for this? It says the word then. It says the word then. I love that. Verse uh, 7. Then... If you do all these things, then you will be successful in everything you do. Down to verse 8. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Only then. The secret, by the way, to Joshua's success. I don't, I don't want you to miss this today. What's the secret for our success today? Even in the midst of a challenging 2022, it's already begun. Just buckle up. By the way, I got to get a pet peeve off my chest. When people say, you know, I don't know what 2022 holds for me. Listen, 2022 has no power. There is, 2022 is not some being. You make 2022 what it is with God. That's what we do. That's how we face 2022. I don't know what 2022 holds for me. It ain't got nothing for you. Only God has what you need this year. Please, careful, these little, 
little sneaky things that people post and put online. There is no spiritual force in 2022. There's God in 2022 if you bring him with you. Can I get an amen in this place? Now, why am I saying bring him with us? Well, the key to the success of Joshua and Moses and the early church was that God was with them. Matthew 28, when he gave him the the great commission, he said, and I will never leave you nor forsake you. It has been the secret of the church. It has been the secret of the weakest man and the weakest woman in this world that look like they got, they have no power and look like they have no skills, but because they have God, they have everything they need. That is the secret to people's success is God. Ryan, how have you done it for the past two years? God, not me. Not me. And I give him all the glory. See, here's what happened in Exodus 32 and and 33 and 34. There was some drama going on with Moses. See, he had left. He had left to go up to the Mount Sinai and and Moses and the people. There was drama because he went up to Mount Sinai to get instructions from God. And while he's up there, I guess he's up there a little too long. But we got to we got to we got to be humble about this. Sometimes we're impatient, too. And while he's up there. The people don't like it, and so they, they're kind of concerned, and so they make a golden calf and start worshiping this image in this golden calf. And on the way down, Moses and Joshua, they're hearing this revelry or this partying or crying out, and what they see is it ends up being that they're worshiping this golden image that has done nothing for them. It disturbs God so much that they have to begin to kill people and wipe out and deal with the sin. This is before Christ and how God deals with sin. And so they begin to, to, to take out, the Levites had to take out people and cleanse the camp. It was that bad. It grieved God so much that he said, I'm not going with you guys. I'm not going to the promised land with you. I will not lead you any further. When the people heard that, they immediately humbled themselves and began to repent. Moses was like, God, you know that we can't go forward without you. You know and I'm paraphrasing, but you can read it in Exodus 32, 33, 34 for context. You know, you know that only, only if you go with us will the people understand. Only if you go with us will be different from all the other nations. It's your power that makes us successful is what he's saying. He didn't dare. He didn't dare move into another day without God. And yet we'll forget about him for an entire week until we come to church. We'll look to vaccines and and to money and to the government and to plans from other people that have no foresight or foreknowledge of what's coming. And yet God does, and we won't look to him first. Now, has God given us wisdom to use the things that help us? Absolutely. I'm not speaking against those things, but God must be first who we seek after. We must let God lead us into 2022. I won't have any favor, Moses is saying, without you going with me. That is the zeal that they had for God's presence. I don't even want to preach this sermon unless I have God's approval. I don't want to make a decision financially for my family unless there's peace from God in it. I don't want to move forward about anything medically or anything like that without God's, without prayer and and confiding in God and looking to him. I don't want to do 2022 without God because I know he is the secret to success. I put it in all caps just so you know. Usually that means yelling. By the way, I'm not mad, I'm passionate I'm passionate for this church. I have a passion for you because I know the secret is doing life with God. It is. And so we're going to learn how you do that. Because Moses pleaded for him, God, I won't go unless you go. I won't move forward unless you go with me. And God said, okay, I'll go with you because I have favor on you. And so he did. But he passed away. He passed away and he was not able to see the promised land, but he did inherit eternal life. Praise the Lord. 
He didn't see the physical promised land, but he's, he's seen a better promised land. And so now it's Joshua's turn. <clears throat> and the way forward for Joshua is the same thing. Don't do it without God. And the first thing we know is the way forward for Joshua and for us this year is to hold on to God's promises. What's his promise? <clears throat> that we will be successful because he is with us. Yeah, we haven't been called to conquer land and armies, but we do have some formidable foes, don't we? We have the virus. We have discouragement. We have confusion in our world. We have <clears throat> deception and lies. We have a lot of things going on in our world that's gonna challenge. We have the greatest enemy of Christians, sin. We have our own foes to deal with. But here's the thing. And, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little honest here. Well, I've been honest the entire time, as you can tell. I'm passionate about the truth. But I wanna I wanna give you a heads up. God didn't promise to Joshua a pain-free, trouble-free, death-free life. He didn't promise that here on this earth because we messed that up in the garden, unfortunately. That's a whole different sermon. Can't wait to preach something like that and look at my own self in the mirror. But it's not what God promised in this life. The new heavens and new earth is gonna be everything that you're groaning and longing for. Everything that our world is longing for, eternity and no death and no pain and sorrow, it's, it's in the new heavens and the new earth when Jesus comes back. The promise that we have though now is that God is with us through this. God is with us through the death, through the pain, through the trouble. And if you have God with you, you have eternal life, which is better. That would be enough the promise of God with him, the success that he would have would be enough for him to take that step forward. And I'm telling you, church, today, you can step forward this year because God is with you. I don't know what big decisions you have, but what, what, if, we, what if we make sure we do what God wants us to do this year first? And we get in, the, in our meeting place, and, and that's, the, that's the second thing. The way forward is be with God in our meeting places. What I, what I mean by that, like the secret place where you get alone with God, where you get alone with him. We need a meeting place with God so we can hear his voice and know his word. And, and Joshua, he knew this well because in Exodus uh, 33, 8 through 11, Moses would go and meet with God in the tent of meeting. And afterwards, guess who stayed longer? Joshua. Joshua was getting ready, and he didn't even know it. You see, when you hang out with God, you're getting ready for your promotion. And I'm not talking about some self-help sermon right now, okay? I'm talking about what God wants you to do, not what you want to do. What God has chosen you to do on this earth, the best way forward is to be in the meeting place with God so he can give you direction. In fact, it was in the meeting place with God that we get this scripture. Joshua was hanging out with God and God told him Joshua 1, 1 through 9. Thank God Joshua met with the Lord so we could hear this. In fact, you're gonna meet with God this year and what you get from God, from his word and from any kind of encouragement, anything you get from his spirit, it's gonna help your family. It's gonna help your friends. It's gonna help your coworkers. It's gonna help everyone around you to move forward as well with God. I'm so grateful that he sowed time in his meeting place with him. Don't miss that. Don't miss this point today. The way forward is slowing down and being with God, not rushing through the year without him. Thirdly, be faithful to follow and obey God's word. We, we have to take that from the scripture because God told Joshua that the only way you'll be successful is if you follow my word and obey it. Psalm 119, 104 through 105 says, your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. 
You know why we can understand which way is the right way and which way is the wrong way? Because we know God's way in the word. That's how you figure out the counterfeit is you know the authentic. And we are living in dark times, so we need the word of God to be the lamp to guide our feet, to guide our way forward. Psalm 119.11, why do we read the Bible? I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Unfortunately, as they were moving forward to fight battles, one battle didn't go too well. God had told them, Joshua and the army, do not take any of those belongings of of those people. They're for me. Sanctify them for me. Don't take any of them. Unfortunately, Achan took some. He hid it. When they went to go fight, they lost their little battle. And what happened is they had to do some cleansing because their integrity was off. You see, when I read that, I realized that my sin can affect other people. And I want to live in integrity so I don't hurt other people, not just myself. And what happened was people died because of his lack of integrity. And there are times where God would deal with the church and God would deal with your life and call you to repent and turn away from sin. He's done it in my life because you're not going to move forward until you remove that sin. And it's ugly. It gets gross. It gets painful. There's gossip that goes around it. There's lying that happens. There's a lot of ugly stuff that happens because people don't want to humble themselves and deal with their sin and they want to blame everyone else. But no one was to blame except for Achan. And it infected the entire army, affected them in a bad way. Can I encourage you to do something today? This is from the Holy Spirit. Can I encourage you to take responsibility for your sin? That is a fading virtue in our world. We want to look at everyone else and go, well, look, they did that too. It doesn't matter if it's you that's doing it. If it's me that's doing it, I need to repent and turn away from my sin because it's going to affect this church or affect my family or my friends. That is just the repercussion of sin. And God is calling us to repent and to turn away so we can move forward with victory. Guess what you're going to need? Guess what, guess what God told Joshua before he said, obey his word, be strong and courageous. You know why? There are days where we have to be strong and courageous and do the right thing. If we humble ourselves, the Lord says he will lift us up. You want to fix things in your marriage? You want to fix things in your family? If you want to fix things in your friendships and relationships, if you want to see this church change the world, then we need to be right with God and take care of those things to move forward. We need to walk in integrity. Why? God doesn't bless wrongdoing He doesn't glorify evil deeds. It doesn't bring him glory. It would bring Satan glory. His favor wouldn't be upon Joshua because, and the whole army, if there was sin, because it would give them the idea that they can keep sinning and move forward and be successful. Isn't that the lesson for us in the New Testament? We can't keep sinning and think God's going to bless us. Sin is not the way forward, is not the way of success. It's humbling ourselves and following God's command and living in integrity that we move forward and are successful and it's God's favor that will make it happen. Wow. That is from the Holy Spirit today. That is not even in my notes right now. God is trying to call us and say, humble yourself, confess sin, take responsibility for what you're doing and then you will be lifted up and you will be able to be victorious. You will see a change in your family, change in your marriage, change in your community, a change in your attitude, your character, everything. You will be set free from the damage and consequences of those sins. Guess what? They dealt with his sin and they went out again and they won. The promise is in scripture, isn't it? Why is this important? Why is, why is it that It's important that we follow scripture. Well, because God has called us to love him. God wants to be loved. And his word says, to love is to obey his commandments. To obey what he says to do. 
And Joshua would fast forward many chapters forward. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. This is what he would say. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates, or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. See, he decided then, they decided before that, that we're going to serve God and obey his commands because that is the way forward. And lastly, has to be said, be strong and courageous in all situations. Joshua was told, be strong and courageous. He would have to tell his people, let's be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous to deal with the sin. Be strong and courageous to follow Jesus who is against the grain in our world today. Listen, Jesus is unpopular. Christianity is unpopular. True Christianity is unpopular. Guess what? Then fine. I guess I'm going to have to be unpopular. As long as I'm popular with God, I don't care. Be faithful to God. Be strong and courageous and be faithful to God through 2022. Be strong and courageous to actually slow down, get rid of distractions this year and get with God. I can't make you do that. I can't be in your house in the morning and go, hey, did you, I can't be that accountability. Let the Holy Spirit hold you accountable to turn off everything and to be with God in your meeting place. It's the way forward. And I say this, that you have to be strong and courageous because sometimes your flesh is like, I don't want to pray. I don't, I don't want to read. I just want to watch a movie or go to bed. But God, his spirit wants to feed you. Be strong and courageous. Deny the flesh. Take up your cross and follow Jesus this year. That's scripture. Be strong and courageous to discipline ourselves and our families to be in church or to watch at least online for now, to be in our word, to serve, to give. Be strong and courageous to lead our families forward serving God. Be strong and courageous to do what's righteous in God's eyes and in front of everyone else. Be strong and courageous if you're fasting. Be strong and courageous of going without something. You know why we fast? The reason why we fast food or fast things and technology is is to not depend on them and find, again, our dependency on God. There are things that aren't bad, but when there's too much of it, it becomes bad because it takes the place of God. So eliminate TV at night so you can read the word and pray and get filled up with more of God. Do something this year and do it not just because it's the beginning of the year. I can't stand that. It's the first of the year. Let's do it for 21 days and then we don't do it the rest of the year. And then you get right back into your bad habits again. Make it a lifestyle. Do you think that they won the battle after 21 days? No. And guess what? We're year three of dealing with what we're going through in our world. It's going to take more than 21 days. So make it a lifestyle. Amen. I want to say this before we close. I can sense that God is just, I can sense that God is trying to really speak to us today as I, as I preach. I can feel his spirit just speaking And the reason why I'm excited and I'm getting excited and I'm passionate is because I can feel God's love for you and that he wants you to have the the best year ever. And he's trying to tell me, he's trying to tell us how to have that that best year. And it, it just gets me emotional just thinking about it. I can feel God pleading through this message right now, online or in person. This is the way forward. Hold on to my promises, he's saying. Come meet with me so I can strengthen you. What does the Bible say? Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their. God's called us to be strong and courageous. Guess where we're going to get that strength? From God, not away from him. And thirdly, he said, do not deviate from my word. There's going to be so many people telling you this ain't true and this isn't real and all that stuff. It's a lie. This is truth follow it. And lastly, all I can say is just be strong. 
When it gets hard, be strong. When it gets scary, be courageous. God is with you when you've done all those things. You can be assured that his presence is with you. Praise the Lord. Can we stand together as we pray? And I want to clarify something I said earlier, just in case when I was being bold and and I hope you guys heard me correctly. I'm not saying that we don't look to doctors. I'm not saying that we don't go get checked up and all those things. Earlier when I said, what I was saying was we look to God first and put our hope in God first, not in the systems of this world first. I thank God for all the doctors and the medicines. I thank God for the wisdom and the guidance of leadership and and all those things. And I'm praying for our, our leaders. I'm praying for our world. But when it comes down to it, the Bible says to trust in God, not trust in man. So I'm just doing some course correction today in our sermon. But I want you to understand that just in case where I'm coming from. Amen. Same thing with the preachers and the prophets. Thank God for preachers. I'm one of them. But God first, his word first, and then let the pastors and the preachers and the prophets confirm things. Okay? Amen. Lord, we we stretch out our hands today. God, we need your spirit. We need your strength. We need your courage. And God, you have spoken today. You have taught us your word. I thank you for this powerful word for 2022. May it be a word we look back to many times to remember that you are there. You've promised you would never leave us or forsake us. And that gives me strength and courage to move forward. God, help us to trust you. We step out of faith, out in faith one step at a time and our trust will grow this year. Lord, we know that your word is the right way, the true way, so we follow it. And we don't just read it, we obey it. And God, we look to you in our meeting place to receive it. We slow down to be filled and be renewed and strengthened by your spirit. And we thank you, God, that we can receive guidance from your word like Joshua did. And God, we see integrity is important that you've called us to win wars spiritually and with integrity. So God, I pray we would do that. And we thank you for your favor upon us. We thank you for going with us. And Lord, I am thankful too that you love us so much that you would challenge us to deal with our sin to move forward. I thank you for that, God. I seek in my own life and heart what needs to go. I pray our church would do the same thing so nothing would be a hindrance of our victory and our success this year. God, build your kingdom. Even this message, not just our personal lives, but may this message uh, help us corporately as an entire church to take new ground, to reach new people, to save new souls that don't know you. God, we are in the pandemic, but you're growing your church in the midst of it. That's because of you. That's not because of me or the pastors or or the body here. We are just participating with your plans. God, we give you all the glory for that. And God, we we want you to, to do things that we didn't even expect you to do in the midst of 2022 this year. God, give us eyes to see how limitless you are. You can do so much more than we can ever think or imagine. Immeasurably more, your word says. So Lord, we step into this year and we're not gonna just survive. We're gonna thrive. We're gonna thrive when we follow your plan, we thank you. And when we have your presence, God, we thank you for that. We will be successful. We don't move forward this year without saying we will serve the Lord. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give God glory and praise for speaking today.